in this video, we're going to talk about cutting your throat. What do I mean? In this book, we have a chapter on self-envy, and I've written articles about this also, self-compassion. And some people, when they see this, they say, that's not a word Prabhupada used, self-envy. And I say, oh yeah, he did use it. They're arguing with me. No, he never used that. This is a new age term. You made it up. I said, no, I didn't make it up. He actually uses it. And what does he mean by this? I want to read what he means. This is from a room conversation. This is very interesting. So you voluntarily accept this cycle of birth, and you don't accept Krishna. Then who can help you? In other words, you're in this world. Krishna's giving you an instruction. You've come here. If you don't accept his instruction, you're just going to remain here. And that's your choice, so nobody can help you if you make the bat a wrong choice. Krishna's not going to do anything. If you have decided to cut your own throat, how can I help you? So he's giving an example. But if I decide not to be Krishna conscious, that's my decision. Prabhupada's saying, I can't help you. Even you're my disciple, I can't help you if you don't want to listen. So that's analogous to going off somewhere and cutting your throat. That's what you want to do and you're alone. Nobody can stop you because nobody's there. If you have decided to cut your own throat, how can I help you? You'll do it. Whenever you'll get opportunity, you will cut your throat. In other words, you want to cut your throat, you just find the right place, get alone, and you'll do it. How much can I give you protection? That is going on. They have no faith in the words of Krishna. So this was Prabhupada's answer to Prabhupada, you know, what do you mean by self-envy? Because the problem is the word envy, as we use it, is not the way it's used in Sanskrit. Envy means to the way they use it, it's like violence, violence against yourself. So if we say self-violence, that makes more sense. So, so someone was asking Prabhupada, what do you mean by self-envy? And so this was the example he gave. If you, you go off and you kill, slit your throat, that's self-envy. Nobody, and nobody can stop you. And so Prabhupada's point is that even the spiritual master can't stop you if you don't want to listen, then you're actually hating yourself, you're, you're harming yourself, you're envious of yourself, or atmahana, you're killing yourself spiritually, and nobody can do anything. That's what self-envy means. So, now let's flip it around. If that's self-envy, then it seems obvious what, and if, and if envy means violence, hatred of oneself, violence, then what would be, what would be nurturing, self-nurturing, self-growth? self-love, self-compassion. That would mean giving yourself Krishna consciousness. So, you know, there, there's talk in the world of psychology about self-love, take care of yourself. But the highest taking care of yourself is giving yourself Krishna consciousness. So when we do sadhana, when we take the time to nourish ourselves through sadhana, that's an act of, that's the highest act of self-care that we can perform. And when we avoid sadhana, when we avoid taking care of ourselves, when we minimize our spiritual practice, we're harming ourselves. And so Prabhupada's saying it's a form of self-envy, and I think this is very important. Because sometimes if, um, if we're not careful, we harm ourselves, we work against ourselves, and we don't even care. And I'm sure you've been through this before. So I know I should do this, and I know it would be good for me if I did it, and I know it would be bad for me if I didn't do it, but I don't care. Just this little voice, I don't care. That's the voice of self-envy when we say, I don't care. I didn't finish my rounds today, but I don't care. I didn't follow this principle, but I missed a codicing. I don't care. I don't care anymore. So Prabhupada's saying, that's actually self-envy. And so I think we need to be connected with this. I think we need to understand this. And when I say, it's late at night, I haven't finished my rounds, but I'm going to do it. That's an act of self-love, self-compassion, self-care. And we need to take care of ourselves. We, we need that mentality. So if within our psychology, we say, I don't care, I don't take care of myself, it, it, it's not going to help us, it's going to harm us. And the last thing, as you know, ultimately we're caring for ourselves so we can care for others. So our self-care is not selfish. We're caring for us 
primarily, first, because Prabhupada came to deliver us. He wants us all to go back to Godhead. That's what he wants. And so it's my service to him to go back to Godhead. In order to go back to Godhead, I have to take care of myself spiritually, right? So, and then secondarily, I have to be fit because Prabhupada wants me to help other people. And unless I'm fit, how can I help them? Unless I'm happy, how can I help them? If they see I'm not happy, I'm not spiritually strong, I'm not detached, I'm not inspired, that's not going to convince them to be Krishna conscious. So I have to take care of myself also to give myself to others. So it's not, when we say take care of yourself, it's not a selfish act. It's in service to Prabhupada's order, service to your guru if you're initiated because you're promising to follow and promising to go back to Godhead because that's what he's doing, that's his job, don't make his job hard. And you're doing a service to others. So let's not be envious of ourselves, but let's nourish ourselves. And in nourishing ourselves, we satisfy Guru, we satisfy Krishna, and we can be of service to the world. Oh.